Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next Star Wars Rebels episode review. This one's going to be for Season 2, Episode 18, The Mystery of Chopper Base. Last episode before the two-part finale. And yeah, this was pretty disappointing uh, overall. I think that's pretty fair to say about the episode. It was, in general, just an episode. It, they tried to create a little bit of emotion going into the finale and... It worked to some degree, but it, you really I really felt like the episode was very much holding back. That it, it could have tried to hit home some of these emotional beats a little bit harder, and it didn't. And then the actual plot of the episode with the spiders and the being afraid of the censors and that whole thing was just fighting for the sake of fighting and didn't reveal really anything extra about the planet. There was no real mystery to it because the... The big thing just came down to, oh yeah, we, we've, we found out the, the spiders are afraid of the sensors, and we just got to put them up, and that will keep us safe, more or less. That was really weak to me, um, and it was, as, as I said, fighting for the sake of fighting, um, sort of creating this sort of a situation that they tried to go for, where Hera is trying to have the group do stuff without... Kanan and Ezra there as the Jedi to give them that extra fighting skill that, you know, maybe they can work together on their own and make up for the fact that they're minus two Jedi, which they will be with the upcoming mission. But even that, they didn't hit home too hard. There were some nice moments. There there absolutely were. And Kanan and Hera had some nice moments. But I'm at, at this stage, I'm a little bit sick and tired of them being so vague about what their relationship is. Like, when they came together at the end, Sabine goes to Kanan, you, know, you have to go talk to her. Like, you, you're you're just going to leave after all of this stuff. You have to say something to her before you go. He walks over to her, and it, it is a nice moment. It shows their connection. It shows that, you know, he is a little bit afraid about what's going to happen coming up next. The danger that they're going into. And that he w does want to eventually come back, and there, it shows their connection. But I was half hoping when they came up to each other that instead of the hug that we got, they were maybe going to go for the kiss. And I don't really know what they're going for because they haven't made it especially clear with regards to Kanan if he is super into the whole um, no attachments thing, so relationships are out of the picture for him or what. Because in, in A New Dawn, for example... Kanan was kind of open to the relationship. I have to read that book again, but if I remember correctly, he was fairly open to it. And especially now, he, he's been knighted, effectively. He is a Jedi Knight now. But we're in this era where the Jedi Order doesn't as such exist, and so being so heavy about the rules, does it really matter? I'm not fully sure, but they've they set up that these two characters care about each other a lot. Uh, Hera has called Kanan love a couple of times and stuff like that. Um, and they, they just really made it out like for Hera, this is, you know, her, you know, kind of boyfriend, husband type character going away. It's also this, you know, boy who has kind of, she's considered a little bit like her son going away as well, so that's very much the emotion you got out of Hera in this episode, that these two people who are very important to her and her team are leaving and she's not entirely happy about it, that she wishes she could go with them but she ultimately realizes that they're doing this for the rebellion's sake, that they have to resolve their Jedi issues the, the lightsaber issues themselves, so they're just waiting for Ahsoka to come back and then they'll head out and, and it it was it worked reasonably well, but I feel they they held back far too much with regards to trying to get the emotion of the scene actually across, and you just the vagueness of some of the dialogue and um, didn't hit hit home as much with the emotion, and um, then the the Ahsoka scene was just there like Ahsoka when, whenever she's appeared in the show has always felt important. This one just felt like. Okay, Ahsoka's here, she said something. Like, just when you think you know the Force really well, it, it confuses you. Okay. And then, like, they, they have this setup, like, the entire episode that um, Ezra is trying to use the Force to connect with these spiders, but he can't. 
and he's really confused by it. And they're playing the Darth Vader music, you know, the fall to the dark side music, basically. And there's no impact on it because we don't know what is exactly they're going for. Like, how does him failing to connect with these spiders really uh, reference anything? And then, especially with what Ahsoka says, how does that mean anything? Um, now, the only link I have here is that in the current Obi-Wan and Anakin comics, Anakin is also at the moment in that it's po before book two, before episode two, Attack of the Clones. Um, he's struggling with the whole connecting to animals thing, and now Ezra's struggling a little bit, and but has some success. Maybe they're trying to create a comparison between the two, um, in that sense. But it just seems very confusing. It didn't really, in any way, seem like a dark side moment at all in this episode for Ezra, in terms of directly setting up anything he's going to go through in the finale, um, apart from the little musical cue at the end. And then Ahsoka, the, her appearance here was quite weak in terms of how it actually happened and what she was up to. Um, I, I did really like the scene between Ezra and Zeb, just highlighting their friendship, that at times they argue a lot, but that they are actually reasonably close. I liked when he just walked out and Zeb is out there kind of lounging around listening to music and Zeb's just like, you know, pull up a box and we'll, we'll talk and um, they just really, you know, like friends, just mention, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I probably won't be around anymore and, you know, you know, you're going to deal with the Red Blades and he's just like, yep, and Zeb just has confidence that Ezra will return and they could share war stories once he's back. That was actually one of the best moments, I think, of setup for what's to come because there's very much the setup that maybe Ezra won't come back because I think the implication that they're going for is that Ezra might fall to the dark side with whatever mission they're on and join up with Darth Maul or something like that, whatever they're going for in the finale, and he won't actually return. And that's pretty interesting to me to see exactly how that happens and that you're kind of going into the finale fearing for all of the characters in the sense of, Ahsoka, is she going to be killed by Vader? Uh, Kanan is a knight, but doesn't seem to be the best lightsaber duelist. And if he's going into a battle against potentially Vader and multiple Inquisitors, and that they seem to be introducing a, another one in addition to the two we already have, um, he's in danger of being killed as well. And then Ezra, I don't think he's in danger of dying, but there's also just him falling to the dark side is the big... Um, I think set up for him perhaps. Um, other than that, you know, there was the I liked the the lightsaber uh, combat scene at the start, uh, showing them really heavily dueling. They're putting a lot of practice into improving their skills. A scene that I think is much needed, but uh, how much uh, of an improvement are the two of them actually going to get? Just dueling each other when Kanan has basically been established as being good but not amazing, and then Ezra. If he's only learning from someone who's good but not amazing, how can he get any better than that himself? Because Ahsoka doesn't seem to be training with them, whereas she seems to be extremely powerful as a lightsaber duelist based on how she handled the two Inquisitors uh, midway through the season when she fought them. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, as I said, the, the main plot of the episode with them fighting the spiders was extremely weak in that, okay... That, that pilot from Phoenix Squadron, was um, Dicer, I think her name was, she wasn't killed, Rex wasn't killed. I wasn't really, like, asking the episode to kill them. But it's just like, okay, we found them there, and it was just like, we're not on Geonosis, but we're going to try and do a kind of crazy, kind of zombie animal type thing, and just going underneath, underground, darkness, play on fears with the creepy bug theme, and it was just kind of by the numbers, you know, escaping just at the end, you know, the, of course the spiders uh, stuck the ghost to the ground, the Jedi are needed to free them, and you have these various moments. Uh, the, a few of the action scenes I did quite like, I liked Sabine, and uh, when she was stuck on her own trying to hold the uh, spiders off, that she had her two blasters and was firing away, but she wasn't being very accurate, but she realized that she needed to aim for the eyes, and then she actually switched from doing the two two things to actually, like, not using one of them, but, like, you, you still having it out for when she needed it, and then, like, using her hand for, for like, a support to aim more accurately. I quite like that scene a little bit. Um, and then 
there was that fun scene that was kind of funny unintentionally when the plan was basically that okay Sabine me and Kanan Ezra and Kanan are going to launch you over to the scanner and you're going to take it back to us you're going to force launch you over there and they're like okay it's going to happen it's going to happen they launch her and then they show this wide shot and she just completely misses and goes off this cliff and it's just this funny moment that for a second you think they've just killed Sabine but then they cut to the next shot and she's just stuck in the edge and eventually manages to get it it was a just a little fun thing to see them overshooting her and and Sabine got a little bit of focus here but again not not really character wise all that much but uh, yeah I'm pretty much gonna end the review there you know solid enough episode but I expected more from the episode that was setting up the finale. Now, because the finale is a two-parter, I'm not entirely sure if, like, we're going to get a ton of setup in the first part of the finale before we even arrive on Malachor, or most of the, like, two episodes are going to be focused on Malachor, and that, like, it's going to be, like, maybe five minutes of setup, and then, like, 40 minutes of Malachor, or what. Um, that's going to be the kind of I think trick to the finale in terms of how good it eventually is because if if the finale has to do like 10 20 minutes of setup that means only one episode is really going to be focused on the whole um, Malachor side of things and that could limit the potential of the finale with what it needs to do whereas I think most of the time should be spent with the Jedi stuff happening on Malachor so yeah that's basically been the review and um, in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on the episode did you find it quite disappointing as the the kind of final episode before the finale or were you actually happy with it uh, sorry about that <laughs> milo stop and um, so yeah uh, that's been the video thanks for watching and bye